So now we have a first event. We can start to look at some of the special uh, functions that makes panel offers. And there's two very handy ones that we'll be using quite a bit. Uh, the ability to track links and the ability to track forms. So this looks like that. So we have tracking links, tracking forms. So we have mixpanel.track links, which binds itself to uh, the ID of, a, of an A link. And we have mixpanel.track forms, which binds itself to some kind of form here, right? So I'll show you. So we'll create a link here and we'll call it some link. We won't really send it anywhere. And we see here, so one of the, the structure of this function, we need a valid DOM query and we need some kind of link. So we'll call this click link. So we're matching based on the ID of that link. And we'll double check here. So we see our code has been updated. If we go back to our live view, actually, we'll most likely see our first event get fired one more time. First event. Uh, okay, so we'll refresh it, and our first event will get fired one more time. Okay, so we have our, our first link, and when we click on it, Mixpanel then is able to bind itself to that uh, click and gets it fires the event when that when that click happens. And same thing. We never really send in any special property except the, the URL. Which is actually not a special property at all. It's actually a custom property. It's interesting that it gets sent along the line. But apart from that, you know you click a few more times and it just simply loads a few more times. So this is one of the ways you can start to add interactivity to to your web app or to your website and start to bind events, mix panel events to actions. And the track forms works in the same way. So when some, someone submits a form with the same ID that you bind in your mix panel event, mix panel will fire the event. Uh, some, some things to consider in this part, the mix panel event gets fired when the form gets submitted successfully. Now, if you have some clients have validation, and the, the validation will usually prevent the form from being submitted, which means the, the event doesn't get fired, right? But, now it's also, of course, good practice to have server-side validation. So ideally, you want to do a lot of your validation on the client side, do some backup validation on the server side, and fire that form if everything, everything looks good. You might run into some issues where perhaps the form gets fired, but it gets rejected by the server. That's something to keep in mind. If you do run into those issues, it might be one of those things where you might have to switch into a server-side library to fire that event. But other than that, I think if you're just starting now, you have very uh, simple setups. The mixed out track forms will make it really easy to track things like sign up forms, which is usually when it comes really handy. So tracking the, the formation of those, of those forms.